Hello and uh, welcome to a series of tutorials I'm going to be doing to show people how to uh, basically mod uh, Elemental uh, past the uh, fairly obvious. Um, so first things first, you should download Fences from Stardock. Uh, I think it's like $10 or there was an, uh, an older version for free. I'm not really sure what happened to the free version, but I mean it's well worth $10. So. I suggest getting it. The, the uh, benefit of that is you can make these very handy boxes right here uh, to put all your modding tools in and then when you're not modding you can double click and they'll all go away. Um, it's a pretty handy tool for different modding needs. Also you can have sort of like pages of these so if you have a, uh, a Fallen Enchantress uh, mod page you can set it up like this and then if you want to maybe mod a different game, you can set up an entirely different series of uh, fences and then switch between the two based on your mood. Uh, what I like to keep on my desktop is the uh, user directory which is in your My Documents and so on. Um, this is ideally where all mods should go but there's so many bugs in the modding system that you really can't do anything besides add minor content from uh, the little mod box here. In fact, yeah, I don't think I have anything in there. Uh, it is handy for adding in new quests, which is fun, but I think I don't have any quests either. And then if you want to go through and uh, edit sovereigns or uh, units you have, you can do it in here. Actually, if you like cheating, you can sort of you know open up Arcane Marksman and give him any sort of trait or weapon that you want. It's kind of fun, uh, but it might crash the game. I'm not really sure. I haven't done it. Uh, oh, so some basic modding tips. If your game crashes, it's because you screwed something up. Uh, a good example of this is uh, I had a monster that was supposed to spawn from a crystal shard, but I didn't have the monster in the game, and when I tried to spawn it, the game crashed. So uh, anytime the game tries to reference something that doesn't exist, it'll crash, and most of the time that comes from modding. Um, so yeah, that this uh, user directory is much less useful. Uh, when compared to the game directory, which has all the actual uh, good stuff in it. Um, I believe that the main question that someone wanted me to answer was about uh, the uh, prerequisites in the game. Uh, so basically there's this sort of system where uh, instead of just having like a level prerequisite, which is an entirely different function, uh, you want to have like only this race or persons with this tech uh, can use a weapon or something like that. It's um, set up in the XML to define that. So like right here I think I was um, doing staves earlier. Yes, uh, so here's one of the weapons that I've added to the game called Staff of the Oncoming Storm. Doctor Who reference implied. Um, and down here we have the prereqs. Um, so let me zoom in on these. In fact, I'll make this full screen for your benefit. Oh uh, yes. Okay. So it has uh, two types of prereqs basically. There's the one where it uh, looks for the ability enchanters uh, from the specified player, um, and then there's the restricted ability, which is uh, basically if you have the trait no ranged weapons. Uh, on your person, on your faction, uh, then you're not allowed to have it. So it's like a prereq and a reverse prereq, um, which is pretty handy because then you can set up things like they've done in the vanilla game, uh, where trogs don't use uh, any ranged weapons. So any ranged weapon you make, you add the prereq. Uh, restricted ability bonus option, um, attribute, no ranged weapons, uh, target player. Uh, so what this actually means is. Um, the type is just, it's going to be either like ability bonus option, restricted ability bonus option, race. Um, there's only a few things that, that the game will actually recognize as type. Um, so let's see if I can name them all. So yeah, there's race. Uh, it doesn't do faction, but it does do trait. Like um, any any ability, anything in the core abilities file can be referenced to prereq something. Um, technology, uh, so it could be type and it would be tech, T-E-C-H, and then they'd have to have that technology before they um, could use it. In fact, yes, that one's example or exemplified here. 
Um, so yes, you have to have arcane weapons for this particular staff. You can't have no ranged weapons, and you must be have the enchanter's faction trait. Um, you'll notice that the target is player on these two because it's looking for a specific trait, um, whereas uh, this is just looking for tech. So basically, I think. It's actually kind of confusing, and I don't quite understand it. But just know that the tech one doesn't require uh, a look at the player. Probably it has something to do with this is an in-game uh, change, and this is something that will start from the beginning of the game um, and be permanent. So, um, oh yes. Yeah, so if you're not like, I mean, most of the time you should just be copy pasting this stuff. Like, I would copy this uh, like this. Oh, and some handy tips for copying. Uh, in your notepad, you want to start at the above tag, um, highlight everything you want up to the end of the tag, uh, do control C to copy, and then uh, start at the top of the tag where you want to add it, and push control V, and it adds everything in. If you had just taken, uh, let me get rid of that, if you had just taken it from here, which seems more logical, and gone like this, uh, well then you have to push enter, and then do it. So it, I mean, it sort of adds an extra step. Um, and then when you're undoing, you have to do three extra steps. So it's kind of annoying. So if you just start at the top like that and go to here, I find that it's faster and you have fewer errors where you didn't quite get the edge of this or to the end of that. A um, little bit simpler. All right. Uh, so basically the way it's going to be, you have your type. And then the next tag is attribute, which is um, the trait or tech or race. Um, for races, races don't isn't just you don't just write type in there uh, trog. Um, it has to be race underscore uh, type underscore trog. And there's a reference of all of those um, in the race types file in the folder here. Let's just show it to you for the sake of it. I'm going to make these bigger again because... Oh! Whoa! Okay, so... So I'm using a new OS here. Not quite used to it. Um, view... Large icons. Hmm, that didn't increase the font at all, but... Can I get... Oh, nope. Bear with me here for a second. All right, so you're not going to be able to see most of this anyhow, but here we go. Um, see, now things are not in the order that I'm used to. Core race, resource, random, race, core race types. Okay, so if you open this file, um, so this is men, generic, generic. Trader. Hmm. Maybe it's the other file. There's um, this is that uh, core race types is actually the uh, fa core core faction types file, which is sort of confusing. Core race configs is the configuration of the actual races. Uh, oh, here we go. So here's what I was talking about: race type Altarians. That is the internal name for races. Uh, something that you'll need to know because you can't just type in Altarians, which would make a crap load of sense, uh, thus it's not in the game. You'll see that there's a lot of things when you're dealing with other people's code where you think, this is obvious, it should be this way, but it's not that way because you didn't make the game, they did, and they do it differently than you do. Uh, Alright, so I don't want to sort of prattle on about prereqs because I don't see any specific things of the actual sort of structure of them. What is interesting is where you can and cannot use them. For instance, we're in the uh, uh, the tech file here, and you can go nuts with uh, prereqs because the uh, developers love to use prereqs there. Uh, in core weapons, yeah, you can use pretty much any prereq you want, uh, including race, I think. Um, but there's some nuances, like if you have two prereqs, for you have like let's say ability bonus option enchanters, and you have Ability bonus option, uh, option uh, greatsmith. 
uh, so or Master Smith, I mean. So then you'd have a situation where you have to have both enchanters and master smith, and if you have both of those, you'll unlock a special staff, um, for instance, which would actually be a really cool idea, and I'm going to add that into my mod, trademark Sean W3, um, because then it would basically be like, well, if you choose these two faction types together, they sort of uh, the two technologies mix with each other, and you get this extra thing out of it. You can't do something like prereq; uh, you have to have enchanters or master smith. Um, because there's no prereq or, there's just prereq and then also prereq, which would be and, logic-wise. And then there is uh, and not for restricted ability bonus options. Uh, and also, please note that this is only for abilities. You can't do restricted race or anything like that. Um, although it would be cool if you could. And you can't, I think you can't do restricted tech. Like, once you research uh, weapons of war, you can't negate uh, war hammers, for instance. It doesn't work like that. It has to be an ability, as far as I know. Um, pay attention to case. That's another good tip. Uh, it says ability bonus option with uppercase for each new word. Uh, now, you have to note that uh, Kale doesn't necessarily speak good English well. Um, lots of the time, ain't is not. So you'll see lots of problems where he thinks it's two words, but it's actually one word. Uh, and you'll just have to remember those specific cases. Um, a good idea is to just do a... See, I assume you're using Notepad++. Uh, if you push Control f uh, it'll bring up a search thing. You can click Match Case and uh, search for all of the matching cases in the document. So if you don't know if you spelt something the way that he did, you can uh, check the rest of the tags in the game uh, to find out. So that's pretty helpful. Uh, there's also cases where, where you'll swear that a word is spelt one way, to be fair to Kale, and he's actually right and you're wrong, so that, that happens too. Um, I don't want to disrespect the devs that control whether or not the game happens. Not always smart. Um, Alright, so that takes care of the uh, ands and ors. Oh, so this is something that I mentioned in a forum post earlier, but not everyone stocks my forum posts, so I'll mention it here too. Uh, let's say you did want to have Staff of the Oncoming Storm, and you wanted it to be available to Enchanters, and then you had an extra faction trait called uh, Staff or Great Staffs. So you think, well, okay, well, both of those people should have this staff, and I want to do an OR function. So the way that you do that uh, is to copy Staff of the Oncoming Storm. So we'll just get right up to the game item type at the end. Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste. Uh, so now you've got two of them. Go up to the internal name. So this is Staff of the Oncoming Storm 1, uh, or uh, just 2, and then put a 2 on this one, or put a 1 on this one. So that's 1 and 2. So now that the internal names are different, as far as the game knows, these are different uh, sta uh, staves. But you can keep the display name the same. It, it can be exactly the same, because display names are just for the user's benefit. Um, so now it appears that there's two ways to get this staff, and you go over here to the prereq, and you have your uh, trait that you've made called uh, Great Staves there. Uh, so now you'll get the uh, Staff of the Uncoming Storm from Great Staves, and you'll get it from Enchanter. So you can do or, but it takes double the code, um, so use it sparingly. Too much XML will slow the game down. Uh, in theory, I don't actually know. I always assume that it does, um, because that's a feels like a safe assumption. But if you think about the actual amount of code uh, for this stuff versus the code for uh, like effects, um, I would say that the effects folder is equal in size to all of the modding um, data in the rest of the files everywhere. So uh, that gives you some idea of how much you can add before you're actually going to slow the game down. Um, and I've never actually seen any evidence of any sort of um, parsing or anything like that um, taking too much longer, regardless of how much you add. Um, a good example of that, I guess, is Stormworld, which adds a crap load of content. Um, okay, so I don't really know what else to talk about for these. I guess I could go to a different file. Uh, this is the fun thing about Elemental. Um, they are so into creating extreme variety to increase replay replayability. Uh, they've actually 
develop that concept into the way that they coded the game. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. If you go into core abilities, prereqs work completely differently than the rest of the entire game. So the, the player can sort of feel this unique variety and randomness in the way that nothing here works the same way as anything else. Um, and you can relearn an entirely new system. Uh, so here's a good uh, thing. These are my um, unique paths that I made. And one thing I had to learn was that uh, pre-wrecking stuff for trained units, which I think is that's Death Dealer, Hunter, Cleric, Spell Sword, Deflect Missile, let's do Defender, Commander, Swashbuckler. Uh, oh, here we go, Mark of the Claw. Um, okay, so you think, okay, well you've got Mark of the Claw. It's a uh, 15, plus 15% 15 armor piercing, very good trait. I want to design every unit in the game with that. Uh, but it's only available for uh, Tarth units. So, uh, how would you do that? Well, you'd say, oh, well, uh, that's obvious, Sean W3. You just simply put in a prereq that says uh, type race attribute uh, race type Tarth. Simple as that. Just super easy. Uh, however, it does not work. For some unknown reason, uh, that simply does not function. What you need to do is uh, add in this tag right here, supported unit model type. Uh, okay, so here we have uh, model type, Tarth and female, um, which is actually, I think, the, uh, the model type, as it would in indicate, uh, for the Tarth and female and male uh, bodies, basically, that you see when you're designing a unit. Uh, so that makes it so that only those units uh, can use this particular trait when designing a unit. Now, I don't know a lot about coding or how to code or what code is uh, beyond XML, so I can't really say why they would do it that way. But I would like to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that their pre code just simply isn't capable of checking things like that throughout the game, and it was more efficient for them to code these things in. And that's fine. I mean, it's not a big deal. Uh, it would have been nice to be able to pre -rec abilities, races, uh, restricted abilities, so that it would be if you have this faction uh, or trait in your faction, then you can't choose this one. Uh, but none of that's possible. It can only be done based on the models. Um, so that kind of sucks. Um, I do feel like you were able to pre-rec um, technology. Yeah, you were at some point. But for some reason, it didn't translate over to race. So maybe you can do it based on uh, the prereq tech. Um, someone should try that and post that in the tutorial thread that I'm going to make after I finish this video um, because that would be interesting to see. Um, so yeah, you'll see these uh, Tarth and male, Tarth and female. Uh, you can kind of do some nice uh, and ors here though too. Um, nimble, lithe, first strike, weapon mastery, Pugilism. Oh, another thing that's interesting is, um, see, like here, Constitution. I didn't like that name too much because it was misleading for the way that I uh, designed it, but there's so many points in the game where Constitution is referenced by monsters or trained units, so I kept the internal name, which means that the game doesn't know there's a difference, uh, Constitution here. Uh, however, I changed the display name to Pugilist, which makes more sense for the reduced weight cap capacity. Uh, but bonus to hit points. Uh, and everything's all hunky-dory. This sort of displays, but this is what the game actually sees, um, which is sort of the big dichotomy uh, in the game, is the game sees one thing, and the uh, user interface will show another, because uh, computers are di just different, I guess. Alright, I was going somewhere. Ah, uh, yes, so I have... Uh, this trait, uh, Frontline, which gives you fif plus 15 defense for three turns at the beginning of battle. Uh, and then I have Elite Frontline, which is plus 10 defense for two turns at the beginning of battle. And at uh, first glance it doesn't make sense, but you can stack these two. Uh, in which case you'd say, well, well if I'm going to build a defender, I want both of those all the time. Which I knew. Uh, so I only allowed the supported model type for Empire, uh, which is actually Craxis. Well, that's another fun thing you can learn um, about the game. Empire female and Empire male 
are actually the cracks because of I'm, I'm sure that those were just the models left over from War of Magic. Uh, so they don't act, it should say cracks male, cracks female, but it doesn't. Uh, so watch out for that. And then Ironi, I, Ironier, uh, female, and Ironier, male. Would their language technically be Ironese? I think it would. Um, so that's uh, how I did that. And then basically it's an or prereq. Um, however, you should note that you can't do an and here. Um, and it, once again, it can only be uh, tech or uh, the tech prereq, I believe, works, but not sure. And then it can only be the supported model types. Um, let me just browse the folder here real quick. I really can't stand looking at it like that. Um, is there any other place where they sort of act weird? Hmm. No, I don't think there's really much more to talk about uh, with respect to the prereq. Um, so I guess I'll end this video abruptly and I'll make a second video that actually shows you how to make mods in the first place, um, which might be slightly more useful for most people.